Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. My name is Zach Peterson. I'm a technical consultant with Altium, and today we're gonna to talk about power regulation in your PCB. And it's actually a really complex topic. It's not so simple as just plugging in some DC power from a battery and expecting that you're gonna get stable power throughout the rest of your system. So it can get pretty complicated, especially when you start to look at component selection. Let's get into it. talking about power distribution and power regulation onto your PCB. The typical power regulation strategy to get to DC power on your board is you take an AC input, usually from the grid, you rectify it to get a uh, voltage waveform that has some ripple, put it through an LPF, low pass filter, to get a little more stable DC voltage, and then what happens next? Usually this whole section is not put onto every single board. This could be part of like a bench power supply unit. It could be part of like a plug that comes out of the wall. And then what happens here after the LPF and your AC rectifier down to DC? The output from your LPF is not gonna be perfect DC. If you actually draw a graph of it, it looks a little something like this. So you have your nominal DC voltage, but you've actually got some ripple right around that. This is a little under exaggerated, but you get this ripple just based on your output capacitor that you have as part of your low pass filter. This is usually a pretty big capacitor. And then you need to take this power and then you need to regulate it down to stable DC voltage so that you can power all the components on your circuit board. So this is where your power regulator comes in. And when you're designing your circuit board, you need to think about which regulator are you going to select? What type of components are you powering? Uh, how much noise can you tolerate in the system? How efficient does it need to be? There's actually a lot that goes into it. So let's get into each one of these different options for your power regulator. So as I said before, generally when you get your output from your rectifier circuit and your low pass filter, it looks a little something like this and it's just got some ripple in it. And your goal is to take this, put it through a regulator circuit and hopefully get out something in the time domain that looks literally like a flat line. Now, you can never really get to this, but you can usually get pretty close if you select the right regulator. So what are your options for regulator circuits? Well, if you just need to get stable DC power and deliver DC power to your other components in your system, the typical choices are first, an LDO. This stands for low dropout regulator. And this is probably the simp simplest power regulator that you'll ever put on a circuit board. The minimum number of connections that it has is three. It's got an input, an output, and a ground. You may have to apply some external resistors to get to just the right voltage you want, but still, it's a really nice, easy regulator. So the other really common type of regulator is a switching regulator. And so the way a switching regulator works is you're basically taking this very low frequency very large amplitude ripple current, and you're replacing it with very high frequency, very low amplitude noise that's overlaid on your DC output. This is a situation where you're just exchanging where the power is located in the frequency domain, and you do that using a reactive circuit with a switching element. We'll do another video that looks more deeply at switching regulators, because it's actually a really complex topic. There's a multitude of different switching regulator circuits. Most designers are probably familiar with the two really common topologies. So the first one is a buck regulator. Buck regulators just take your DC output and drop it down to a lower value. The other type is a boost regulator, which, as its name implies, takes your DC output and bumps it up in value. And then there's also a buck boost regulator, which allows you to move between buck mode and boost mode, depending on how you design the switching regulator. Within these two types of regulators, there's actually a lot of research activity still in switching regulators. And one of the reasons for that is to power very high frequency circuits, particularly circuits that are uh, used in uh, power supplies for 5G base stations. Next, let's just look at how these actually work. So let's look at the way an LDO works first, and then we'll talk more about switching regulators. An LDO operates under a simple idea. I take in my input DC voltage and it's at some high value. I'm then converting that to my output, which is also DC voltage, but at a slightly lower value. When I say high voltage here, I'm not talking about like some, some ridiculously high voltage. This is going to be a value that's say, you know, let's say 5.5 volts. And my output here could be a little bit smaller, 
3.3 volts, so let's say logic levels. This is a pretty typical way to use an LDO, is to take one logic level, step it down to another logic level. And so in this process, I'm losing 5.5 minus 3.3, which just gives me 2.2 volts. Now, this is gonna output some DC voltage and some current, and my current multiplied by my voltage is gonna be the power that I lose in the process of this conversion using my LDO. So what happens to this power? Well, this power gets dissipated as heat. So LDOs can get hot as you operate them, depending on the difference between these two voltages. So because of this, if you wanna get this heat that you generate in your LDO down to zero, you would have to bring your high voltage and your low voltage to be the exact same value. Unfortunately, LDOs don't work like that. The way an LDO works is it's kind of like a comparator circuit. What you're actually doing is you're comparing your desired output with your input, and if it's bigger than a certain reference voltage, which is generated by a silicon band gap reference circuit, that will then cause the output to saturate at this regulated 3.3 volt value, or whatever other value you decide to put into your LDO regulator circuit. So because of this, there is sometimes a tendency to set this to whatever value you want and step this down to, say, your 3.3 volts. So imagine just for a moment you're inputting 15.5 volts. What happens here? Well, now I dissipate 12.2 volts multiplied by whatever current I want to get out of this. That generates a lot more heat. So LDOs can get very hot and can be very inefficient. So if you're ever looking online and you Google something like LDO efficiency and it comes up with some number, maybe 85%, don't trust it because they're operating under a very specific input voltage and a very specific output voltage. The calculation to determine your LDO efficiency is very easy. So what are some of the advantages of using an LDO? Well, one of the advantages of using an LDO is they're really simple. They're probably the simplest regulator you'll ever wire up aside from like a voltage divider. They can generate less heat than a voltage divider, especially if you get you know, to this situation where you have the high input and the low output to be very similar. When you're operating at values somewhere in the neighborhood of three volts on your output, the minimum difference here, which is called the dropout voltage, can you be about as small as like 0.7 volts. So 0.7 volts, so that's pretty small. And if you're outputting, let's say maybe, I don't know, 100 milliamps of current, the power that you're dissipating as heat is so small that you'll never notice it. So that's one of the nice things about using an LDO is they can be very efficient when you have to supply low voltage at low current. Another thing that is really nice about these is that if you remember in the original intro, we had our input waveform and our input waveform had some ripple on it. Now, the output can actually have this ripple decreased by something in the neighborhood of like 60 dB if you have even a decent LDO. This is just off the shelf components, no additional regulation. Maybe you have an, uh, a capacitor on the output of the circuit. And in another video that's coming up, we'll look at some actual circuit diagrams, some actual application diagrams that show how you can get to this number, and it's actually really easy. Another advantage of LDOs is they're really cheap, under a dollar, like for every LDO I've ever seen. And they're really, they're just really great for stepping between different logic levels. So I can take my five, my five volt logic level, I can step it down to 3.3 with one LDO. I can take another LDO and step that down to 1.8, take that and step it down to 1.2, and I can just keep going down the line to all my different logic levels. Again, we're assuming that we're operating at not too high of a current, because if you do that, you actually do get very inefficient once you start daisy chaining LDOs. In general, you might need to have a more sophisticated power supply strategy if you're actually sourcing power into your board at multiple logic levels all at once. We'll talk more about LDOs in an upcoming video, and you can find a link to that video in the description. So the next really common type of regulator is a switching regulator. There's a lot of different types of switching regulators, and we're gonna do another video that actually goes into switching regulators a little more deeply, and we'll explain a little bit more how they work. But right now, we wanna give an overview of why you might wanna use a switching regulator, and then some of the problems that you can have with switching regulators. So why use a switching regulator? First of all, if you remember with the LDO, right, when I have my high input and I go down to a low output, I can be very inefficient. So if my voltage in is much, much greater than my voltage out, 
then I get very low efficiency. So my efficiency can be very low with an LDO if I need to step down from a very high input voltage to a very low output voltage. Switching regulators don't really have this problem. A switching regulator can very easily step down from a high input voltage to a low output voltage without having a very low efficiency. So switching regulators, even when doing a big step down like this, can still have at least 85% efficiency if they're designed well, depending on the other components used in the circuit. Whereas in this case, with an LDO, you can actually get the very low efficiency very easily if you have to do that big step down. Let's just go over some of the pros real quick and why you might want to use this. So as I said, high efficiency, main one. So another reason to use switching regulators. Um, there's actually a lot of different components that integrate the switching element and some of the supporting circuitry into a single component. So they can be compact, or if you need to get to very high current, you can actually procure all of the components and put together a switching regulator from discretes really easily. So you can get to high output current. We'll call it high amps. And again, if you design it correctly, you lay out the circuit board correctly, you'll still maintain high efficiency. Unfortunately, we don't get everything for free. So what are the cons of a switching regulator? Well, one of the cons of a switching regulator is that they can be very noisy. Now, the way a switching regulator works is I have a MOSFET. In my MOSFET circuit, what I'm doing is I'm actually powering it at the, at the gate with a periodic series of pulses. So this is a pulse wave modulated pulse. And essentially what this waveform is doing is it's turning the MOSFET on and off, on and off, over and over again. And so every time this MOSFET turns on, it draws a burst of current into the circuit. And so that burst of current actually creates the noise that you see on the output from a switching regulator. There's also a problem that happens back upstream at the input. Every time you draw one of these bursts of current, it creates harmonics that are seen at the input. And if you're in Europe, that harmonic content in your power is actually heavily regulated. It's not so much in the US. In the US, we actually have pretty dirty power coming out of the walls, and that needs to be filtered and regulated upstream before you even get to this point on your board using a power factor correction circuit. So dealing with these inner harmonics that get generated from a MOSFET can actually be really difficult if you're working at high current. If you're working at low current, you're working only on your board, you're not plugged into the wall, it's less of an issue. And generally what you can do is you can use a more complex switching fit regulator. So you could use multiple phases or you could use larger, like physically larger components in the regulator and I'll explain how that actually works to help you get to low noise in the next video. What you can also do is you can just run this thing at higher frequency. And this is an upcoming area that's actually really important also in RF power supplies and RF power amplifiers. Those things will actually run at multiple megahertz of frequencies. Whereas your typical like high current, uh, high current, high inductance uh, uh, switching regulator it's probably gonna run at like hundreds of kilohertz of frequencies. That puts a lot of stress on component selection to make sure that the output that you get from your switching regulator, if you look at the waveform, you wanna make sure that you keep this noise as low as possible. And so keeping that noise as low as possible is one of the main reasons that you would try and use a switching regulator. You don't have the problem with ripple that you get at the input, and you convert it into some noise on the output. And if you select the right inductor on the output and use the right frequency, you can actually get this level of noise to be pretty small. However, this noise ends up being seen at all your other circuits. So switching regulators are actually not recommended for use in analog circuits. All of this noise ends up getting superimposed on the output from your analog circuits. And if your analog circuits are running in the linear regime and maybe there's some amplification or something, any of that power with noise that gets put into those circuits that noise also gets amplified. You have to take some strategies to filter this. You have to creatively select some components to make sure that this doesn't get too large. There are a number of strategies involved in switching regulators to try and keep this noise as low as possible. All right, so I've been going on enough about the difference between LDOs and switching regulators. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna do some more videos on each of these types of regulators, and we'll get a little bit deeper into each type of regulator and when to choose each type of regulator. Links are in the description. If you need to make your own circuit boards and you need to make your regulator circuits in your circuit boards, you can use a free program like Circuit Maker. It's a great way to get started with PCB design before you move up to a more advanced program like Altium Designer. Go to circuitmaker.com, sign up, create an account, 
and get started designing. If you like what you're seeing and you wanna see more videos, hack that YouTube algorithm for us and smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, come back and watch more, and don't forget to call your fabricator today.